Yes. Hey guys. So for today's video, I have this project here. Um, what I'm tackling today is going to be uh, like a floating type entertainment center. I'm going to build a uh, like a frame around the TV. I'm uh, going to make up a little bit of room here. I'm going to build it about 14 inches from the wall out this way. Just enough to uh, properly set in the PlayStation 4, the PlayStation 3, and the miscellaneous uh, ornamental stuff. <coughs> um, I'll see, um, don't have an idea yet on how I'm going to run the, the power from, from there to the back. We want to uh, keep it uh, simple and empty on the bottom. So I got these from the store. So I'm going to put this probably, I'm assuming like next to that outlet on either side, probably on this side. Uh, that way I can run the cable, the power cable straight from out, out of here to the power source and then through the inside of the wall up to the back of the TV. Um, and then I will have all my cables hidden behind it. So let's get started. All right guys, so what I've done, I went to the hardware store and uh, I picked up some 5 8 uh, by the sheet of 4 by 8, 5 8 uh, MDF. <clears throat> I like working with MDF because, I mean, it's easy to work with. You can mold it and cut it. It's almost like steel to me. Um, but it's got a real smooth finish. You can paint over this real easily. So what I did, I, uh, I cut two pieces at 14 inches. One of them will be the top part, the other one will be the bottom. And then I'm going to cut off, I'm going to make it six feet wide. So I got two feet excess on each side, which I'll use for the sides. Um, I believe we wanted to go with about 10 inches inside uh, uh, height. So I'll see if those two feet give me enough. want to do four shelves in the bottom or, or on this one. We want to do four, four little storage areas. And then I'm going to make a, a smaller one with that piece that goes above this one and that one will be about 10 in, uh, 3 inches shorter at 11 inches I think um or I think I cut it at 10 I'm not sure so it'll sit over here and then I use the excess off of that cuz that one's going to be 5 feet so it'll be sitting inside this one and then we want to make that one only about 6 to 6 to 8 inches high we're not sure yet but um so what I'll do right now, trim this off, I'll cut my sides, and then I'll start bracing it and making it a box. Alright guys, so got this put together, nothing to it, very simple, uh, using some nails. Um, that's just to prop it up. I'm going to go ahead and drill them in with, with these fine uh, trim head screws. Um, these are make it a lot easier for when you're doing like, not technical work but you know like trimming and stuff that you don't want certain things to show or not to be that big those are a lot easier to for you to wood some uh, wood sealer on there or wood filler and sand it down um, if you come up across little hiccups like this not to worry uh, once I screw them in place I'm gonna pop that back out with put some wood uh, sealer and sand it down Right now what I'm going to do is determine how wide I want the second shelf unit to be and then how high also. So that's what I'm going to do right now but as soon as I figure that out I'm going to go ahead and cut it up and and basically do the same thing and then screw it onto the as on top of here. All right, so I got the top shelf on or area All right, so I got the top part on. We went uh, 10 inches, and we went six inches. Or no, nine inches and six inches. Um, I've already screwed them in. Put a couple of screws, top and bottom. Um, these uh, countersink screws work real good. They go right in. They don't leave any uh, 
what, what, what they're supposed to be is kind of like for an easy, easy um, cleanup finish, which really is. I mean, just take some sandpaper to it. That's what it looks like. And some wood putty. And virtually gone. So, I mean, as soon as that's dry, I pulled it out a little bit. As soon as that's dry, I'll sand it down. Um, and it'll look like a solid piece. Uh, what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to make a hidden air, a compartment back in the back so I can run my cables through it. So I don't have to uh, make any holes in my wall just because I have plaster, not uh, <clears throat> sheetrock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sink these, this wood in. I'm thinking probably about <clears throat> probably about an inch and a half. Um, so that I have enough room to run my cables, all the coaxials, all my RCAs. Okay, got it in. So, probably only about an inch and a half in. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this area right here. So I could run my cables in and out. I'm going to run an, another tier right here. But this one is actually going to be a, a, a small piece. So that <clears throat> I can. Alright so like this. This is basically what I'm going to do at the very top make a small piece like this all the way through right around here so I can continue to cut this run my cables up and this will be the divider between the shelf and the frame or the TV you know so I think this might have to be about four inches but that's what I'm gonna end up using so I'm gonna put one one of these two on this one and do the same thing ultimately so from the inside when you look at it in like that against the wall you're gonna paint that the same color as the wall so that it gives you that added uh, illusion that that you know the shelf is up against the, the wall so I'll do that and then we'll go from there all right guys so uh, I got done with that piece just prep for not actually done with it I still got to do a lot more things to it but we brought it in here for a test fit just to kind of get an idea of what it's gonna look like uh, one thing that we decided to do that we hadn't planned on earlier was what I'm going to do instead of <clears throat> setting that in an inch and a half from the back, I'm actually going to bring it out probably about eight inches, uh, almost in the center, and I'm going to make it removable from, from this area. That way we can hide that right there with all of its uh, plugs it'll be more accessible under there hidden behind there so then all we got to do is just run a, a the power the plug from there straight up into this area plug everything from back here you'll never even see that it's there i um, gonna drill some holes right in here in that corner right there so we can run whatever you know I want to put my PlayStation and whatnot here or the DVD players uh, and then run the wiring out that way from here to the TV they'll be hidden through that that piece right there that's only about an inch and a half from the wall um, we're gonna paint it the same color that way it gives the illusion that it it's open um, the TV it is that's not how we're gonna have it. We're not gonna have it sitting like that. Um, we're gonna raise it back up. I have uh, probably about four, five, about seven inches where I had my old brackets and that we brought it down just a little bit. And you can probably see the hole right there. That's where the top mount is at. Right now it's right here. So it'll give us a seven inch gap between here and there. But we're having second thoughts. We're not sure if maybe might be a good idea to set it um, with just a smaller gap. Um, 
we're gonna discuss it right now and see what we're gonna do but as of right now I, I like the size of it it looks good so as soon as we're done you know that's gonna be gone so out of there it's gonna be a floating entertainment center I'm gonna finish this off with one inch uh, pieces going down like th right here all the way around in the center too that way it just gives a thicker feel more of an actual furniture piece um, and then once we do that um, so yeah six foot long on the bottom five foot on the top uh, nine inch gap six inch gap all right so uh, while that was up there I pre-drilled uh, some 3 16 holes through the back of that area right there uh, so now I'm gonna use some um, wall, wall braces that are originally for any kind of stucco work see right here I'm drilling a half inch hole to stick this in <clears throat> and it basically creates a, a brace with uh, some thread inside there in which then you just Simply put a bolt through and it holds it up. So I'll go ahead and do that right now. Um, I'll mount my, um, I think I actually had already used the exact same ones for, for this TV mount. All right guys, so what I'm doing right now, I'm making the box for the frame around the TV. Um, I'm using this, it's like a crown molding style, it's a 45. Um, so what I did, I measured this at an upright like this, uh, measures down two and a quarter and it measures from this tip to the back of what would be the box measures three inches in width. So <clears throat> that's my inside uh, me measurements of the actual screen, 47 and a half by 26 and three quarter. So there's three inches of on each crown molding so you add the three inches and then you also compensate for the thickness of the wood um, however since I'm sinking them in like this not at a 45 see like that uh, I only added the six inches to this one since these are gonna sit in the inside of the other one on the outside these on the inside these on the outside as you can see right there so added six inches only for the crown molding that gives me um, exactly 47 and a half since the the other measurement this this measurement is the one that I'm gonna have to compensate for the thickness of the wood uh, so on this one it's uh, added six inches to each side and then plus five eighths for this thickness of this wood and five eighths for the thickness of that wood so I ended up with a, if I'm not mistaken, it was 34 inches. So uh, that's what I have right now. I'm cutting them up, framing them up. Then <clears throat> this piece is going to be cut at a 45. And it's going to sit in like that, you know, on both sides, all four corners. I mean, so see how that goes we'll get this uh, cut up this is gonna be like a little collar I guess like a little neck that's gonna be between the entertainment center and the frame um, this whole this is where I'm gonna hide all the cables going through here and this will be the same color as the wall so ultimately this will sit up right you know once I have that piece on here it'll sit up right below it like this so let me finish this up and then I'll uh, show you guys how this is going to look out in the inside of the living room. Alright guys, so I got the piece all framed up. It's not all the way, it's just actually just freestanding right now. It's just sit, resting on that piece right there. But um, that's how it's going to go. If you didn't, if you didn't have a, a flush area like this right here, so it still needs to go back some more. But um, this is just propping it up there. Uh, you can always go back and put a little bit of that molding to fill in the gaps. 
I'm not gonna do that. Well, I don't think I am. I might. Um, this is pulled out right now just so it holds the piece up there, but this actually goes recessed all the way down there. See that gap right there? So it'll actually be about this far in. So it's not gonna sit like that. You know, once I have the hangers up there holding up the frame up, top, up on top, um, that was, that's how it's gonna be. Um, don't even ask me how I'm getting those cuts. I'm just eyeballing everything with a square and a 45. I'm setting it in there. Uh, it'll look, once it's put on the right way, right now it's leaning forward, but. So, uh, having a bit of a hard time with one hand, but. See? That's how it's gonna look pushed in so I'm not I don't have a big deal with that I don't have the right uh, equipment for woodworking so um, what I'll do is I'll just fill that in with some caulking and um, you know it it'll it'll do the job <clears throat> so one more thing I'm gonna have to do is once this is all built I'm gonna have to make a little hole right here for my remote for the TV but that's how it looks right now. Uh, one thing that we I, I might do, I'm not 100% sure yet. I just bought a 38 inch uh, sound bar. That way I don't have to run the entertainment center with all the speakers. I just want to clean. Uh, I wasn't sure if I should make a, a bracket from here down this way, across and up, and then set the sound bar in there. I don't, I don't know. I think it might not look that good. So I'm probably just going to set it on top of here or on top of there. Uh, I'd be happy with that. Um, so what I'm going to do right now is finish cutting the other two pieces like those. For the top and the side. Um, I'll talk to my fiance when she gets home and see if she wants to go ahead with that, with that molding. I just kind of bought that myself. It might not be her style. I'll see. Uh, and then also whether we're going to put molding on the outsides or not. Um, but I've been getting home late lately, so um, it's dark outside already. So I might just wait till the weekend and start hopefully getting that done. I got tons of projects. That's another project right there. Um, getting rid of that old school flooring that's been here for who knows how many years. Uh, there is... Uh, wood floor underneath so we're hoping it's all around the kitchen cutting that off probably in the weekend have to sand the whole thing down and restain but for now that's it all right guys so uh one thing we decided to do was to make this piece the frame removable easily removable just because um you know, we have the buttons on the back of the TV on this side in case we lose the control or we can't find it. Uh, we have all the cables to plug in, the HDMIs, RCAs, all the stuff back there. Uh, so in order for us to um, get to them back there, I want this piece to be removable. Just because of the fact that we wouldn't be able to uh, do that if or hit any of those buttons or plug anything if that piece... It's extremely hard to take off. So this is what I came up with. <clears throat> uh, instead of bracing this piece against the wall, I cut a piece of uh, wood straight across. That way this rests on it. And what I did for hinges, those original brackets that I was gonna bolt on, I actually made them to where they, they slide in place. See? So, um, it comes right off. So I, I cut some, I don't know if you guys could see some cutting marks in the back of that piece of wood. I took my grinder and I and I made the cutout of that bracket and the mold of it. That way it slides right in. I don't know if I can show you guys from this side. Nah, it's hard as tell. <clears throat> but yeah, um, the frame will set in there real nice. It'll come right off. This is gonna be further in. 
I'm actually going to shorten it down a little bit more, probably about two inches. So right now it's at three inches, four inches right now. So I'm going to cut that down to three inch, uh, two inches, so it hugs the wall a little bit better. Um, so yeah, I'm going to start doing that right now. Uh, I'm going to finish off framing this piece first. So that's what I'll do just now. All right, guys. So what I've done now, I brought out the entertainment center out. I cut a bunch of wood at one inch. <clears throat> Same MDF. Um, what I'm going to do with this, I'm going to face the front of the, of the entertainment center. You know, center those in just like that. That'll give you a better look. It'll look more um, authentic than just, you know, with half inch. You could use three quarter and then I've heard a lot of people do one and a half inch uh, fronts or face, whatever they're called. But um, since I use five eighths, I'm going to go with the one inch uh, pieces. So that's basically what you do. These longer strips are for the, for the top, the horizontal areas. And the shorter pieces are for the vertical areas. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, nail those in place. Then I'll be able to start sanding and, and filling in with a wood filler. Hey guys, so I uh, skipped a step, but uh, I painted the piece already. I finished the front. That's what it looks like when you add the one inch um, faces in the front. Or I don't know what they would be called, but they're just like the front of the actual piece. Um, so, you guys can see it sticks. I could have sanded all this down really, really good, but um, I'm thinking we're going to end up going with a different color on this eventually. So I'll tackle that then. Uh, the weather has not been the best in my favor right now, so that's the reason why I was trying to get inside as soon as possible, rather than working outside where it's wet. Um, okay, so this is what I have done. There's going to be some spots, some areas where you're not going to be able to um, uh, evade seeing a cable or two. I could hide those for the router by drilling another hole in there, but I'm not going to do it because I'll show you guys why. Um, it's my new light bar that I got from Amazon. Um, that actually is, I cut this a quarter inch higher than what the measurements were for this. So it always sits right there. Uh, with a little bit of play, um, it hides that piece back there. Uh, and as you guys can see, all my cables are running down through the back. It's like the hidden compartment. Um, right in there. That's the hidden piece. Uh, I am, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to paint gray. Whatever parts I need to paint gray to match the wall, that's what I'm going to do. So if you guys could see right here, a little touch up right there. But once I paint this gray, that gray, and that gray, it'll give the illusion that that piece of is not there, you know. So that's what I was aiming for. Uh, what I did for the bottom piece... I don't know if you guys can see those hinges hidden up there, but um, you can't actually see them from, from the living room. Um, what I did, I put a little hidden door so that I can access, and there's all my cables back there. Search protector with all my cables. And I'm going to paint that gray also to match the... This is going to be gray, and that piece that supports the piece is going to be gray also. Just to kind of give a, a nice look. Just like that. Um, I'm going to paint that wire gray also. Maybe even white, right where the trim is at. Just because there's nothing I can do about that one. Because when we bought the house, it was already there. That's where they ran the cable line. Um... So I'm going to, I don't know, I might figure something else out. But for now, I'm going to leave that like that. I'm just going to paint it. I'm going to tackle the gray paint. I'm going to paint this, the whole frame. Uh, I'm going to putty, wood putty, the um, <clears throat> those little holes I put on the trim for the TV. I'm going to fix that corner because I, I need to sink it back in as well as this. I don't have the right tools. 
Um, so that's what I come across when I, you know, when you don't have the right tools uh, to get the right angles. But um, this, I'm gonna take another piece. I'm gonna glue it in place, uh, and then I'm gonna silicone it, and then I'm gonna hand sand right all the little areas to where it looks like there's nothing even wrong with it. Same thing for that side. Um, so yeah, I'll paint this up. Get that back up there so you guys can see. And what I did, I made the frame to where it hugs the inside of the TV so you don't see any of this black. You know, so I'll show you guys that in a minute. All right guys, um, I wish it was daylight right outside right now, but uh, it's nighttime. So all this looks a little bit orangey, doesn't do it any justice, but um, this is the end result. That's how it looks. I ended up doing the gray sides, the gray centers. Um, I didn't, I, w I didn't do the hole right there like I wanted to because the control still works. <clears throat> Just got to get close to it. See? Um, that's how the corners look. Everything's close to the wall, so I'm not going to put no silicone or nothing, but plus that's removable anyways. Um, so... I was mentioning earlier about the some of the cables that we're not going to be able to be hidden. See that's like they run back there. From from a distance you don't see them anyways. They're not that noticeable. The only one that's noticeable is that one down there. Um, either way, um, I'm going to try to figure something else out for that. Uh, but there it is. It didn't take very long. Honestly, I want to say that if I added all the time that I did throughout the week to do this, it probably took me one weekend, uh, Saturday, Sunday. It took me probably about a week to finish it, though. But that's after, you know, two hours after work, an hour and a half after work, painting after work. So, um, it's very easy, very cheap. Uh, altogether, I think I paid, that was one sheet of, uh, of five-eighths. MDF ran about $29. The trim, I think that was like 17 bucks. Those fine screws that I put throughout the whole thing were like seven bucks. Um, the paint I already had. And that was pretty much it. Uh, aside from that, I mean, if you, have, if you have a table saw or if somebody you know has a table saw, they didn't let you borrow it. Uh, very simple. So remember, that's six feet wide. The top one is five feet wide. Um, it's 14 inches wide from there to there. And the only reason why I did that was just to accommodate units like the PlayStation, uh, maybe a surround sound system or whatnot, but we ended up going with the light bar instead. But, you know, I, I have the option of putting different things on the different areas but if you guys notice I did do the holes like that just in case uh, to drill I mean to run uh, electrical plugs uh, this definitely gave our house a whole lot more space as the old unit was sticking out to like maybe about right here um, and it looked like a monster you know Um, so yeah, that's it right there. The whole piece comes off really easy. See if I pull on it, it'll come apart. Um, I did it to where you can, you can't see the, you can kind of see it if I focus in, see how that right there. But when you have the full TV on and it goes from edge to edge, you don't even see it. Um, 
See, that's part of the screen. It's just black around the YouTube channel. What I was mentioning about the hole was because if you guys notice right there, that's for the remote. So I was thinking of drilling a, maybe like a half inch hole right here, which would stand out a lot. But luckily for me, um, there's probably about a three quarter of an inch, no, maybe less, about five eighths of an inch gap right here. And that allows the control to take, um, to get a signal. What I did for the corners, didn't come out perfect, perfect like I wanted them to. I could go back in here and sand this some more, but I decided not to. What I did, I put, uh, I put, uh, what is it? It's that, it's that hardened, that, uh, the resin with the hardener, mixed it up, put it behind, uh, and basically glued that piece really, really strong. And then I went into the front area and I filled it with wood putty. Uh, that way when it dries, I was able to go in there and kind of sand and I used a razor blade to go in there and kind of make some fine adjustments to it um, to fill in that gap. From up this close, it's it's obvious. You can see the 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 detail. But when you stand even three feet from it, it's as if nothing's even there. You know, so I'm fine with that. The rest of the corners were good. I mean, for not having the right equipment to make these kinds of uh, cuts, I'd say that I did pretty good. I was actually hoping to get something a lot worse. But yeah, man, I hate this lighting inside this house right now. And we have the daylight lights in here. I'm not sure why it's throwing off such a yellow haze. Probably the wood. But anyways, um, that's it right there. Very minimal investment. Uh, it makes a huge, huge uh, improvement onto the living room. Uh, we're going to paint that wall a uh, softer color than that. Um, like I mentioned earlier, we're ripping off that ugly floor. Um, and, you know, that's just in the, one of the things that we really needed to get done because it kind of gives us motivation to keep going. So I hope you guys like it. Um, I hope the video kind of gives you guys some ideas on how to go about something like this in your own houses it's very easy like i said encouragement i'm not at all a professional woodworker um this is just very basic stuff uh aside from that all you really need is a table saw uh i use the nail gun but if you don't have access to a nail gun it's not gonna kill you it's not impossible you can use the hand drill um so yeah guys i hope you guys like it um don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.